So I think it would be fun to try a little song with some motion. Oh, that sounds great, but I'm tired. I'm going to go down in my nest and rest while you sing a song. See you later, friends. I went out to look around to see if spring is here. Then I spied a robin and I gave a cheer. Hooray! So give a cheer. Hooray! Flap your wings. Shake your tail. Oh yeah! And let's sing. Ah! Because I spied a robin who told me spring is here. I went out to look around to see if spring is here. Then I spied a robin's nest and I gave a cheer. Hooray! So give a cheer. Hooray! Flap your wings. Shake your tail. Oh yeah! And let's sing. Ah! Because I spied a robin's nest that told me spring is here. Hmm, let's see if we can find one more sign of spring. I went out to look around to see if spring is here. Then I spied some baby birds. Beep, 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 beep. And I gave a cheer. Hooray! So give a cheer. Hooray! Flap your wings. Shake your tail. Oh, yeah! And let's sing. Ah! Because I spied some baby birds who told me spring is here. Yay! Great job, friends! Thanks for singing along and doing the movements with me. That was really fun. Now, friends, you remember one of those signs of spring that the birds taught us about was a building their nest. And I have a special surprise to share with you. Look what I have right here in my house. <gasps> Do you know what this is? It's a bird nest, you're right. Some birds build their nest with sticks or straw or moss or all kinds of other things they can gather to build their nest. And so I wanted to share a little finger play with you about two little robins. Two little robins up in a tree built their nest for all to see. Along came the babies. One, two, three. Beep, 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 beep. And now they're all a happy family. Isn't that cute? Little baby robins in their nest. So I'm going to set them down for a minute and I'll teach you how you can do that rhyme with just your fingers. So, can you make a little cup with your hand like this? And then one, two, three, put your fingers down and hide them in the nest like this. Two little robins up in a tree built their nest for all to see. All along came the babies. One, two, three. Beep, 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 beep. And now they're all a happy family. Good job, friends. Thank you for doing that rhyme with me. Well, Corky, you know, I think it's just about time for us to go out into the garden and take that tour and do some bird watching. Are you ready? Oh, boy, I sure am ready, but I'm not too excited. I'm nice and calm. Okay, buddy. So, let's head out into the yard. Come on, friends. Let's go. Well, my friends, if you listen closely, you can hear a lot of my backyard bird friends singing this morning. I think they're really happy that the sun came out after that rainstorm last night. And I wanted to take you on a little tour of my bird feeding station in my yard. So I'm gonna step up and you can see we have several different kinds of feeders here. This container holds a mixture of different sorts of seeds and the birds can perch around on different places and enjoy those seeds. And over here we have a suet feeder. This is filled with a special suet cake. It's a kind of fat with seeds and raisins and other things in it and the birds just love it, especially the woodpeckers. 
And on top of that is a special feeder that holds dried mealworms. Isn't that crazy? But some, of, some birds are insect eaters instead of seed eaters, and so that's important to them. And then down below those two feeders, you can see, do you know what that is? I wonder what that could be for. It looks like a cone or a funnel shape. Hmm. Well, it's called a squirrel baffle. And when the squirrels try to climb up the pole to get to the seeds, ah, they can't get around the baffle to get up to the top, to the feeder. So it keeps them out of our seeds and saves the seeds for the birds. Now, if we look over this way, you'll see another feeder in my garden. And this one is filled with seeds too, and it also has a, a squirrel baffle. You see that big black round shape? And on the bottom of the pole, there's a slinky. Have you ever played with a slinky? It's a fun toy that goes in and out and in and out, but we put it on the pole because that keeps the squirrels from climbing up the pole. And then up here you'll see, this is a special feeder because this little bar right here, if a squirrel or another heavy animal tries to climb on the feeder, he pulls this down and he can't get to the seeds. But the sweet little birds that hardly weigh anything, they can perch there or they can perch on this side. So we can feed a lot of birds at one time. But you see how that, that locks the squirrels out of the seeds? Yeah, so they don't even try to get in it. It's pretty cool, huh? And I'll take you around down my pathway and you'll see a special garden I just worked on this weekend doing a brand new garden here. And if we come across the pathway to my porch, you'll see we have another bird feeder that we can see from our dining room window. This station has two feeders and they're in the shadow right now underneath this pine tree. But there is a special feeder, the one on this side with the yellow, that's filled with thistle seeds, the favorite seeds of the goldfinches. And over here is another feeder filled with regular bird seeds. So the birds have lots of places to come in my yard and enjoy a snack. Well, my friends, I thought maybe we could try to be nature explorers and bird watchers together. I found a place to sit near my bird feeding station, and I'm going to try to be very, very still and very quiet and very patient and see if some of my bird friends will come to visit the feeding station as we watch. Let's see what we can discover together. Well, I can hear two sounds right now, my friends. I hear my neighbor's dog barking nearby, and I hear the sound of that little chickadee fuss, fuss, fussing at me because I'm near her nest. Chickadee dee 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 dee. Chickadee dee 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 dee. Can you make that sound, friends? Chickadee dee 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 dee. 
Now you can get a really good look. Downy woodpecker. See the bright colors and patterns on his back? Well, hey again, friends. I thought maybe it'd be fun for us if we could play a little game of I Spy. Have you ever played that game at, maybe at home or maybe at school or at your daycare? It's a lot of fun. So we're going to put a little twist on that, and I'm going to share a poem with you that I wrote, I Spy a Bird. Because April is National Poetry Month, I thought it would be fun for us to share this poem together. And there's a special part that I need your help with. Will you help me, friends? Awesome! So, whenever I point to you, you're going to say, Hi, bird. Who are you? Can you try that with me? Hi, bird. Who are you? Come on, grown-ups. I want you to help, too. Let's, let's have fun along with, the, with our friends. One more time. Hi, bird. Who are you? Okay, I think you're all ready to do it with me. So, you may be wondering, why am I sitting here on the floor next to my washing machine? That's crazy. I never did story time at a washing machine before. But I'm thinking a lot of you probably have a washing machine in your house, refrigerator in your house, or something else that you can use to hold magnets. And that's what these are. These are some of the magnets from my refrigerator that you can move around. Do you have magnets on your refrigerator at home? Maybe your, your grown-ups hang up some of your amazing artwork to celebrate how creative you are. So I'm going to take down these. These were just some examples, and I just wanted to point out, last time we were together, we talked about the flower fairies, and here's one of my favorite magnets, a little flower fairy perched on a mushroom. <laughs> And here is one made out of wood with a hummingbird. 
And since we're talking about birds in my backyard, the hummingbirds haven't quite returned yet from their winter migration, but I still like to think about them. So I'm going to read you my poem, and then you can join in. Remember what to say? Hi, bird. Who are you? Let's get started. First, we're going to look at this picture. Hey, that's my bird feeder. Do you remember when we saw that green bird feeder when we were looking outside at my bird feeding station? So here's how my poem starts out. I spy a bird perching on my feeder, feeding some seeds to his mate. With his bright red feathers and his sharp pointy cap, this bird is looking great. Now it's your turn. Hi, bird. Who are you? My name is Cardinal. Did you know that one? Yeah, that bright red bird is called a cardinal. Let's try another one. We're going to do this one. <gasps> this is a photograph from my yard. I wonder if you know what this could be. Hmm, it's a big round dish filled with about this much water. Can you imagine why birds would want that in that yard? Well, birds drink water just like we do. And birds have to take a bath just like we do. But they take a bath by splashing in the bird bath. So let's do our next bird. I spy a bird splashing in my bird bath with feathers as bright as the sun. He loves to munch on my thistle seeds and his wings shine for everyone. Now it's your turn again. Hi, bird. Who are you? My name is Goldfinch. His name is named after the color of his wings. All right, let's hang up another kind of feeder. Do you remember we saw the suet feeder out in my yard that holds the suet cake? So let's see who's going to come. Can you guess who's going to feed at the suet feeder? Hmm. I spy a bird hanging on my suet feeder with wings of white and black. He takes a bite and flies away. And then he chirps and flies right back. Good job. Hi, bird. Who are you? My name is Downy Woodpecker. Wow, we're finding lots of the same birds that we found out in my backyard. Let's try one more. Ooh, that is a special birdhouse I have in my yard that's made out of clay and decorated with wildflowers that, that I have in my garden. So let's see who's living in that birdhouse. And this is really happening in my yard right now. I spy a bird peeking out of his house. Just, whoops, come on there. Just, oh, he doesn't want to stay. Come on. Just every now and then, he flits away to gather some grass and he flies back in again. Remember your part? Hi, bird. Who are you? My name is Chickadee. And remember I told you his song? Chickadee, dee, 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 dee. Let me hear you sing it. Chickadee dee 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 dee. All right, we have one more. Now you might be wondering, why did I take a picture of a big rock in my garden? Well, it's because one of the birds we saw at my feeding station is a bird who likes to, to hop around on the rocks down on the forest floor. He doesn't really ever come up to the feeders. He stays down low on the rocks. And so here's our last bird. I spy a bird hiding in my backyard. His breast is speckled brown. He hops around from rock to rock, eating seeds from off of the ground. Hi, bird. Who are you? My name is Wood Thrush. 
and you can see why he has those speckles. Do you notice how he sort of blends in with the background? He camouflages, and that helps him hide so he's safe. He feels safe while he's eating down on the ground. So that is my poem, I Spy a Bird. Thanks so much, friends, for helping me with that poem. So friends, do you remember at the very beginning when Corky and I were talking about some fun ways that we can practice being calm and relaxed and just present right here in this moment together? And one of the ways that some people like to practice doing that is with yoga. Have you ever heard of yoga? Well, there are some different motions that you can do with your body and special ways that we can practice using our breath that help us feel nice and calm and ready to learn and ready to play. And so I thought we could try some bird yoga together today. I am not a yoga expert, but you don't have to be to just try it and see if you like it. I found some fun bird poses on kids yogastories.com and I'll share more about that with you at the end of the video. So I'm going to just show you two of them and the first one I had to do with you because it's called the penguin. And in real yoga they call this the mountain pose. It's so simple. You, it's good to be barefoot, which I love being barefoot. And you just put your feet about as wide apart as your hips. So we're just right about the same distance, and then you stand up nice and tall, tuck in your tail feathers, and push your shoulders back. That's the mountain pose. Let's take one deep breath together doing that. Good job. I feel really strong when I do that. And we can turn it into a penguin if you just dip your flippers out a little and waddle back and forth like Corky does when he walks. Very good. So you could try that at home with your grown-ups. It might be fun to try it in front of a mirror while you're practicing so you can see how you look. The second one is the rooster pose. In yoga they call this the crescent lunge, but that's a fancy name. We're just going to call it the rooster pose. So we're going to take one leg. We'll take our left leg and put it behind us. And then you're going to bend your front leg a little bit so that your knee is right above your foot. And you feel nice and strong and steady with your shoulders back. Then we're going to take our arms up above our heads like you're pointing to the sky and look up. Imagine you're looking up at the sun and take a deep breath. And then lower your arms back down. Now you can stand back up. Now, if we wanted to turn that into the rooster pose, I wonder what we could add. Let's see, if I put my foot back and bend my knee and raise my arms, maybe I'm a rooster seeing the sun first thing in the morning and I could crow. Er, er, er. Can you crow like a rooster? <laughs> Good job. So maybe you'd like to try some fun yoga poses and hear some fun yoga stories online. So friends, you know, we've been observing nature by going outside and looking at the birds in the, my yard. And we learned a little bit about bird nests. I wanted to share an idea with you for something you might be able to do at your home with your grown-up. I used a pine cone and some ribbon to create this, which I could hang outside in a tree or on a bush or anywhere that I have a space to hang something up outside. And then the birds can come and pull the ribbons out and take them and add them into their nest. And it makes it so much easier to find the birds' nests that are hiding around your yard or your neighborhood if you can find a brightly colored piece of ribbon or string or maybe yarn or thread, anything like that. It could be little strips of cloth. And if you have a, a 
dog at your house or a cat and you can brush a little bit of that downy fur out. You could even put little pieces of that onto the pine cone. So I'll just show you what I did. I just found a pine cone like this and I cut some pieces of ribbon and simply put it in between the little pieces of the pine cone so it hangs out on the side. See, it's really easy. You don't even need glue or anything because we want the bird to be able to come. <laughs> I put that one in too tight. To be able to come and pull it out. So you don't want to move it in too tight. See, like that? And then the bird can pull it right out and take it away to their nest. And you can use another piece of ribbon at the top to just tie onto the pine cone with a knot. And you could get a grown-up to help you do this part if you needed it. And then to take the two ends and tie them in a little loop. And maybe you could just hang the ribbon right onto the tree branch, or you could use a little hanger like you use for a Christmas tree ornament to hang it out on a tree in your yard. So that might be a fun way for you to help all the birds in your yard or your neighborhood who are trying to make their nest this spring. Well, friends, I am so glad that you came to visit me here today in my home with Corky, and we had lots of fun together learning about the birds in my backyard. We did so many cool things together today. It was wonderful to have you here. Yes, friends, I just love being together with you, and I guess we'll close with our ending song. It goes like this. Goodbye, friends. I'm glad we got together. Goodbye, friends. It was fun to sing some songs with you. Goodbye, friends. I'm glad we shared some laughter. Goodbye, friends. It was fun to smile a while with you. Goodbye, everyone. We'll see you next time. Bye, friends. Thanks for stopping by. Okay, friends, it's time for you and your grown-ups to find some fun resources online so that you can keep the learning and fun going and learn more and more and more about the birds in your backyard. So I'm going to start out with some things that you can find online on Hoopla. And remember, you can go to our Carroll County Public Library website, which is library dot c a r r dot o r g library dot car dot org and then you can go to our collections and see all the different resources you can find online so here are a couple about birds that you can find on hoopla now this first one has a very exciting bird on the cover. It's the shyest bird in my yard. Do you remember when we heard the pileated woodpeckers drilling sound while we were watching the bird feeders? Rat-a-tat-tat-tat-tat. They're the biggest woodpeckers that live in my woods too. They're very shy, like I said, and we hardly ever get to see them, but when they appear, it's very exciting. You can learn more about them in this cool nonfiction book. Here's another nonfiction book that's part of a gorgeous series. It's perfect for sharing with even the youngest children. In addition to the spectacular illustrations, there are two levels of text. So you can simply read the larger text and it reads like a story. Or if children are really interested in the details, you can highlight some of them as you follow each child's curiosity. Here's a fiction story. You know, that's the opposite of nonfiction. So these are stories that the author made up in their imagination. The first one is Telephone by Mac Barnett. Did you ever play the game of telephone? You know, you whisper something in a friend's ear and then they pass the message along to other friends. The giggling begins when you hear how the message changed by the time it reached the last person's ear. Well, in this book, a mother bird passes a message to her baby, and he sends it along to his bird friends. Read this book and find out how the message changes by the time it reaches home. Here's a classic picture book 
The title is Feathers for Lunch, and the author and illustrator is the same person, Lois Ehlert. A curious house cat is on the prowl. Meow. He spies 12 common birds in his backyard and tries to catch them. Instead, he winds up with a mouthful of feathers. There's a helpful guide with more information about the birds included in the back of this fun book. Would you like to pretend to be an animal in the zoo? Well, this video, called Zoo Zen, will teach you and your grown-ups some fun yoga poses that stretch your imagination and your bodies and help you feel calmer and more ready to learn and play. It comes from Dreamscape Media. You can practice counting and rhyming while you learn a healthy skill. It's perfect for children ages 4 to 8. Namaste. Now let's look at another part of our online resources. It's a news site called Canopy. And when you go to Canopy, you'll see a section called Canopy Kids. These are lots and lots and lots of great videos that children and the whole family can enjoy together. I wanted to highlight one called Wings of a Bird, which is episode 13 of a series called Earth to Luna from Monster Entertainment. In this fun video, you'll meet Luna's little brother Jupiter and find out what happens when his paper airplane glides into a nearby bird's nest filled with baby birds. What will they learn about how baby birds learn to fly? You'll have to watch and find out for yourselves. I wanted to share also an online resource. It's a website um, that helps you identify and keep track of the birds you spot in your neighborhood and out on your travels. It's an interactive website from the Cornell Lab of Ornithology, eBird. Dot org. So it's the letter E, then the word bird, dot O-R-G. You can sign up for an account on eBird, and then every time you spy a bird, you can record your sighting, and it will help you identify the birds that you see, and it helps scientists all around the world who study birds to learn about the bird activity that's happening where you are families can use the free app for birding on the go. Happy bird watching! And last but not least, I wanted to be sure that you knew that Outreach has a, pin, a Pinterest page and you can find us on Pinterest by searching library ccpl backslash outreach. And there we have lots and lots and lots of boards on all kinds of story time topics. And there's one about backyard birds. And I've gathered some ideas there for crafts, for more yoga, for stories, for science experiments, all kinds of fun learning and play. So you might want to check out some of the things that we've, I've pinned there and try them at home.